Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, interview for the wonderful film Cicada. Uh, my name is Lisa Rose and I am the Festival Director for Queer Screen. Uh, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land of where I am, uh, the Gadigal people of the Aura Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Sovereignty was never ceded in Australia. This was and always will be Aboriginal land. Okay, so you are here for the interview for Cicada. Uh, some of you have probably watched the film, some of you have probably not, and hopefully this uh, interview will give you insight into why you should watch the film once, twice, and many, many times. So we have some very special guests, there's a whole gang of us. So I'm just going to uh, introduce them all. First of all, I'm gonna bring in uh, Matt Pfeiffer, who is the uh, co-writer, co-director, and one of the lead actors. I'm um, also going to bring in uh, Sheldon D. Brown, who is uh, one of the co-writers and one of the co-lead actors. Uh, we've got Kieran Mulcair, who is the uh, co-director, and we have Jeremy Trong, who is the producer. Welcome. Thank you all so much for being here and joining Thank us. Thanks, um, for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yes, so great to be here. Exciting interview. Um, so you're a very diverse bunch, which is which is really great and something that uh, you know I like to champion as a programmer. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about how it came about that this film, which clearly is an incredibly personal film, um, for but it seems to be for Matt, Sheldon, Kieran, the whole gang of you really. There seems to be personal elements that are in there. So I was wondering if Matt, if you could just talk about a little bit about the genesis of of how it all came about. Yeah, so Ben and I have a few similarities. Um, I do have an earring, so I know it's like hard to tell between me and the main character if you've seen the film. Um, I was working on this film in the winter of 2018. I was really depressed, and the script just poured out of me. It was like it needed to. Um, I, you know, had psychosomatic symptoms that would flare up. Um, spoiler alert for people who haven't seen the film yet, um, depending on what was going on in my life um, or what was going on in the news. So with the Jerry Sandusky trial specifically, I remember uh, this one summer I had gone to a dozen um, places wanting to know what was wrong with me. I went to a neurologist, a cardiologist, um, and uh, I... Um, I had to figure that out on my own. Um, and funny enough, uh, the day after we wrapped the shoot, I had um, I had to go to the ER. I had dysphagia, which uh, the character has in the film. And it turns out that I actually did have something. So, you know, for all you hypochondriacs out there, it's, uh, it's not real unless it is. So, um, when I finished the script, I texted Sheldon, who I had in mind um, from the very first page, and I said, hey, if you're in New York this spring, I have this project I think you'd be great for. Uh, Sheldon lived in Chicago, and he still lives in Chicago, and he said, well, funny enough, I'm you know, in New York right now. And so that week, we gra uh, grabbed a drink, and uh, and... Uh, I guess over the next month, um, Jeremy came on board, Kieran came on board. These were two old friends I had worked with before. And uh, then two months almost to the day, um, Sheldon um, texted that he had been shot in Chicago. And Sheldon can, uh, you want to chime in, Sheldon? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I, me and Matt have known each other for a number of years, and uh, it was really when he asked me to be a part of this film, or would I be interested, I, at first I was like extremely nervous because um, I had never done a film before um, that time. And, uh, you know, I just kept thinking like, you know, why, what could I add to the film and, you know, what, uh, you know, how do you know I can pull something like this off? Um, and, you know, two months to our conversation and this bar in Brooklyn syndicated, uh, we're t we didn't even really talk too much about the script, but he, you know, had me in mind. And a few months later, I was just randomly, um, shot, gunned down in a, uh, drive-by shooting in Chicago. Um, uh, 
and completely changed, upended my whole world in the sense that, you know, didn't really know how much performing I was going to be doing after uh, the incident. And it left me in the hospital for uh, a month with uh, limited mobility at that. So, um, you know, Matt called and, and, and was, you know, there and very supportive. And um, we had this discussion of, is this something that could be done and could it be possible to do? Um, and just having this idea, um, you know, of being like incorporating our, my own trauma and my own experiences and adding this unique richness to the story um, in which you have two individuals who are wrapped up in deep, deep um, trauma and pain and um, healing and trying to do that with each other and for themselves. Um, and it became something, a, a completely uh, beautiful uh, transformation. And then we started filming two months after leaving the hospital and, and, and trying to put this together in, in uh, a few weeks. Yeah, because it, it's really interesting because like it, it's it's such a um, it's such a deeper film than a lot of films where it's like you know it's romantic and it's sexy and it's like you know it's a very meet cute way that you you know you meet. Um, but there's just so much more depth to it because of the fact that they are both you know uh, have so much trauma in their past that through getting to know each other, uh, it gives them courage to you know to live their truth. And so I was wondering, like, uh, Matt, like when you approached Sheldon, like how far along with writing, had you written anything yet or was it just you had an idea and then it happened? Because obviously with the two of you having, the two characters having so much trauma, it really it really speaks to the film. And so had, you know, Sheldon not have had that personal experience, was there a chance that that element would not have happened and it would have just been trauma from one side? Yeah, I mean, it was a very different script when I had finished. Um... It was pretty fleshed out uh, when I had sent it to him. And then over those months, we talked about how to develop the character and the relationship. Um, and then, yeah, April 7th, when that happened, um, it uh, definitely uh, changed things. But the or original trauma was more in, in line with like the fact that he was uh, the only black person at this tech company. He was coming out to his father. Um, and so, um, yeah, I mean, the film had always been about trauma and my trauma was, uh, you know, within, I'd never had a scar. Um, and, and Sheldon, you know, his was very apparent when he came on set, it was still, um, you know, very fresh. And um, that's what Kieran and uh, Sheldon and I wanted to, um, one of the things we wanted to work through um, in, uh, in making this. So Kieran, uh, you obviously uh, you have co-directed with Matt and obviously for, you know, Matt has written it as well and is starring in it. Like uh, how, can you talk a little about the process of how that worked on set? Like, um, you know, when there's two people collaboratively working on a project and when it's so personal, uh, how, you know, how decisions are kind of made and, and that kind of process. Are you muted? You just need to, oh, hang on. Actually, I can do it. There you go. I've done it. Sorry, that was my <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so a couple of things I did want to say. We were just that we shot this film on um, Lenny Lenape land, Canarsie land, and Tongva land uh, in the US. Uh, those were the native peoples who occupied the space. Thank you. And those stories, uh, we have some extent stories, but we don't have access to so many. Um, so just out of respect to them, uh, we shot there and, um, yeah, Matt, Matt and I originally connected, uh, I was a fan of his work cause I had seen an early series that he had done and we connected on social media and he was looking for an acting class to take. And I've been studying with my acting teacher for a long time. And so I recommended her and we ended up in this acting class together and I was working on a scene from a play called. Um, the Great God Pan by Amy Herzog, and it's about sexual abuse survival. And so the subject came up, and I talked about being a sex abuse survivor myself. And it was in that connection that we uh, we first forged our working relationship. 
And um, because of that connection, it made a lot of uh, narrative decisions, a lot of, a lot of uh, those decisions where uh, it could be anyone's call. It made us very sensitive to one another uh, and respecting one another's stories um, and knowing that we had the shared um, wound uh, from, from which to tell this story. Uh, I knew that this story was so close to home, particularly for him, so I tended to defer ultimately to him because I, I just wanted to tell his story to the best of my ability. Um, with Sheldon, Sheldon had and I had spoken on the phone before uh, the shooting and he had such a firm grasp on the inner life of this character. Um, and I, he did the brave work of, of incorporating what he had gone through into this character um, and bringing his own trauma that was so fresh that I don't, I don't know many artists who would dare do this, but he did it. And it was, uh, you can see, absolutely amazing. Um, but uh, I think that knowing that where these stories came from was from uh, a place where a wound was still fresh and far fresher you know, for one of us uh, made us, uh, forced us to be very sensitive to what uh, each artist wanted to express at any given moment. And um, so it was pretty harmonious for, from that perspective um, and for that reason. Yeah, and I do wanna add, I think, for, in terms of how it went on set, you know, for production, it was very much that Kieran was directing. I mean, he, obviously, you know, Matt is also directing. He's also the actor, he's also like producing. And so there's like a lot to be done. I think Kieran, not only had the responsibility of directing, but at the same time was sort of almost acting as like a life coach, as a therapist, as like someone working through trauma on set. It was very much like revisiting very difficult memories and very difficult experiences with them. So you'd have to find like on set, um, you know, rehearsals are very much just like silent and people would sort of just sit, you know, they would go sit in the corner and they would talk about it. And it's almost like they're trying to navigate how to like relive these experiences rather than specifically figure out like, how do we act out this scene, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, cause obviously it is, you know, obviously a lot of filmmaking is very personal, but it often doesn't deal with, with trauma. Um, so I'm just wondering, you know, this is, you were meant to have your world premiere at BFI Flair, which unfortunately um, didn't happen, which is a terrible shame. Uh, and so, you know, the world is going through a bit of trauma at the moment. Um, and so not getting to, have you actually been able to do any screenings in, in person or have they all just been virtual at this stage? And how has, how has the reaction been and how has it been for you to feel do you know, because you're very exposed, like obviously this is, you know, these are characters, but you know, there's that connection. So how, how has that experience been for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I guess I'll start it off. I woke up at 3.30 this morning from a nightmare feeling very like naked and, um, and um, I don't know, I feel very um, like everybody's seen so much of me and so yes, we have had um, a couple screenings. One of them, our first one was at Outfest in LA and uh, it was at a drive-in. It was gorgeous, it was underneath the stars. I imagine there were cicadas there, but there probably weren't because I don't know if there are in LA, but in my head there are. And uh, it was sold out, they're pushing people away. There are a lot of honks at the end. Like we heard it was great. So, um, and we're actually going back to BFI October 12th. Fabulous. So we got uh, invited to the 64th annual which is really exciting that's um, great yeah so i um jeremy do you want to take off from there yeah i mean i i think all i really have to say about that is that you know obviously we had such a plan for like what we wanted to do and how this was going to go and i don't think anyone sort of expected it to go the way it has and i think despite all of that it does feel sort of right to have played what we have played so far and like Obviously, BFI has this huge sort of redemption arc to it now that we're going back in October. And I think all of that's been very gratifying to us. And I think there's was like a sort of unintended um, consequence of having so much virtual screenings that we've been able to connect with so many more people uh, from all over the world because they've been able to see stuff that I think a virtual festival doesn't um, normally advertise. Like there's just so much more connection going on behind the scenes. And I think that's been really valuable. 
Yeah, and I can tell you now, I wouldn't have been able to afford to bring all four of you out to Australia. So that, <laughs> so that, that is a bonus for me that you, you can all be here uh, for this interview. Um, so I just want to talk about the, the casting. So obviously you had uh, some pretty, obviously, you know, Sheldon and Matt are both fabulous in the leads, but you also had some, some pretty great uh, supporting cast in uh, Kobe Smulders and uh, Freckle and um, Scott Edsit. So I just wanted to ask, uh, how that how you managed to get how you managed to get them and um, yeah uh, Kobe is a friend of mine um, Scott adds it is is uh, a friend of Matt's uh, Michael Potts I I've just been, I saw him in Jitney on Broadway and I was like Matt you have to email offer in the subject line to his agent and just give him the offer because he will do it. Um, and so he was, he was someone we actually went the more somewhat more traditional route of, you know, through his representative because I didn't know how to access him. And I, it was so hard to get though. He, what we tried many, yeah, we tried. I, 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 I tried so hard not to fan geek out at him, but the, um, but yeah, so that was, we didn't have a casting director, you know, we were just doing calling in favors from friends and, and Freckle was a, also a friend of Matt's. Um, and they were in LA and so we flew them to, to New York. Yeah, we had a, uh, I had a few people in my head from, yeah, from writing it uh, in the beginning. I knew that it was only going to happen if some friends said yes, because we didn't have, you know, money. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that old thing. Um, so obviously the, uh, the medical professionals in the film are um, uh, quite problematic. Um, and so I'm assuming that is a very conscious choice. Um, and perhaps that is also something that is speaking from personal experience in terms of the experiences you've had um, with, you know, with therapy and, and with seeing doctors when you're trying to be diagnosed. Did you, I missed the middle of that. It was kind of reverting. You said medical. Yes. So the medical professionals. Um, so obviously Kobe and Scott's characters are really quite problematic. And um, I'm assuming that that was a conscious choice um, and not just played for laughs uh, as a kind of a examination of the situation. Yeah, I, the first th therapist I saw, she was, she didn't, I don't know, she didn't mean to be the way she was, I don't think, but she, de I definitely don't know if she had a license. Um, <laughs> and I think that that's like, a lot of people in the States go through this. I don't know if it's like that um, where you're from, but it's just so hard to find like a, a therapist, somebody to talk to when you're yes. at that point, you'll, you'll really talk to anybody. Um, yeah. No, we do have a thing in Australia where you can, uh, you can get 10 free, uh, 10 appointments, like not free, but like heavily reduced if you, you see a, a GP and things like that, but it is still incredibly hard to find someone that, you connect with um and mm -hmm. is useful to is useful to you um, right and I, I should mention like i think it was like what we saw in the film i think was like a sort of curated choice that we made in the edit where we wanted them to have some sort of like legitimacy like some sort of at least emotional legitimacy to their reasoning there because there you know there, there is like a super extreme version of this where we, we had to cut the scenes because they were just so funny that it doesn't it was too right. much like yeah. for both of them yeah, you know, there were there were extreme versions of those characters, and I think we wanted to at least play to the strength that, like, if if not perfect, at least that's someone that's there to listen. You know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I wanted to talk about just sort of the the general sort of so the word vibe. That's not a very good word to use, but um, like so the indie wire. I'm going to read a quote from indie wire. So they said Sakata is a modern day portrait of gay men that observes without unnecessarily inserting melodrama. Um, and, you know, melodrama obviously has its place, uh, but there clearly wasn't that in this film. And it was, it feels incredibly realistic and uh, authentic. And I'm assuming that that was completely intentional. And I want to talk about the, just that process of trying to, because obviously there's a lot of, there is a lot of drama in the film, but it's not melodramatic. Is that really, well, does, I, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I wanted to make sure that we were dealing very honestly, circumstantially with everything 
every layer of circumstance with each character. And Matt gave me a very wide berth to work in rehearsals uh, on that. Uh, and some of it called for a certain degree of creative invention, um, but just to, to really anchor each character in the reality of those circumstances. Um, and there are varying degrees of challenge based on the information we're given or based on um, where the actor is coming from. But um, that was a very high priority for all of us to have a realistic feel. And Eric, our, our DP, um, Eric Schleicher was, was instrumental in maintaining that as well because the visual language of the film, I think possibly more than, well, I don't wanna say more than anything, in addition to everything was a very important element in making it feel you know, um, like it's happening you know, in front of you. Yeah, it is incredibly beautifully shot, the, uh, the film. There's a, a few scenes that really stand out. The one um, by the water, uh, by the, fa the fountain, is it a fountain? Yeah, watching this part. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's so, it's so beautiful to look at. And, uh, and also the, the one with, this is me doing sparklers. <laughs> <laughs> sparklers um, is, uh, is really, really beautiful. Um, so this is a spoiler alert for people who haven't watched the film, uh, but I want to talk about the ending. Um, so for me, uh, the ending is the thing that has stayed with me the most and that um, I have, uh, I've just thought about it a lot. Um, and the fact that it, you know, it builds to them both coming out in different ways um, to their parent and the fact that you don't actually see it and their parents' reactions uh, is such a choice and one that I think is quite remarkable and genius uh, And because it's not about seeing their reaction. It's about the fact that these two men gained the strength and courage to finally do this. So was that always the intention um, to do that or was there a version of the script where you saw the parent reaction or you saw them actually say those words to their yes. parents? We had a full, I had a full scene with Michael Potts. Uh, oh. <laughs> coming out to Michael Potts. <las> oh, oh my God, God. that scene. Yeah. I forgot oh, we had that God. scene. Was... And he kept saying, what is this, gay? What is gay? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It, it was, was so it intense. Was... It was all improv. All improv. Yeah, it was improv. Uh, okay. it, was, it was emotionally wrought. <laughs> it was one of those things where we had like Michael Potts for like another like half an hour, we're like, what are we doing? Why aren't we doing the scene? Right. Um, so it's like, we it's do, do that thing where you <laughs> come out and we got that. But with um with Sandra, Sandra uh, Baleo, who plays my mother, we uh, we did not. Um, it was always the intention to to end there. Um, and that gorgeous shot again that Eric caught by like literally following this kid. Um, Bo Sylvester, he has six names, I'm not going to get them right, but uh, the kid who plays um, Little Ben, he was just running around the backyard and Eric just went off and um, somehow got him in focus for that gorgeous, you know, 60 frames per second shot. Um, yeah. And I think that was one of my favorite, one of my favorite scenes to shoot. It was the end of the day. It was like the very last thing we shot. It was such a somber feeling on set, but I I was having a catharsis. I don't know if, if Matt was, but I remember the, the it was just such a, a special moment when I was talking about speaking for, uh, for your younger self, you know? Uh, and that was such a, a beautiful artistic breakthrough, I thought, for Matt. Uh, and it was so great to witness. Uh, and if I could just add, uh, there's so much care that has been put into this work, and uh, not only from Eric Schleicher, who put so much care into capturing so many beautiful shots, um, but just, you know, Kira and Matt and Jeremy and I really knowing that although we're experiencing this trauma for ourselves or experiencing our own journeys and, and going through that in the making of this process, once we share it with the world, uh, there are so many people that are also having that journey too. And we want to respect that and we want to cherish and honor that um, and know that um, like there's such beautiful healing with loving someone and loving yourself um, and loving all of it. 
Um, and so there's so much care that has been put in the process that is, is, is really, really a beautiful, um, it was a beautiful making for sure. That's, that's great. Um, so uh, you've only recently kind of started doing, was Outfest the first screening you actually did, was it? Yeah, so yeah. You've only, it's only just started on its, uh, on its journey. And I hope that uh, many, many, many people uh, watch this film and get something from it. So what is it, like, what is it ultimately that you would like um, for people to, to take from this film? Like, yeah. Um, Kieran, you want to start? <laughs> I think it, I, I'm just going to repeat what Sheldon said so beautifully less eloquently um but uh uh <laughs> boy am i living up to that i i <laughs> what i want is for people to for for me this story is about how love can heal those wounds that don't seem like they can be healed and so i think uh a lot of us came to this project with the question how do we heal this um and a lot of people who have undergone all sorts of trauma have that question, how do we heal this? And I think that the film does a really good job of positing a potential way forward. And uh, that way forward is paved with love. And it was through this connection that these two people shared uh, that they were able to find that way. So I think the thing I want people to walk away from this with is uh, the hope and the reassurance that love will heal that. Amen to that. Honestly, yeah. this whole process is love. And, you know, I, I, that can always sound cliche, but for queer people, um, having the journey of loving yourself to love someone else and going through that journey of trying to find that for yourself, um, it's something that we don't see enough of. Um, we absolutely don't see enough of. And, um, our own trauma and our own pain can keep us from, from that journey. And so if anything is important, it is having an immense and deep love of yourself and, of, and being able to share that with someone else. It's great. That's beautiful. Um, I want to thank you all so much for not only letting me screen the film uh, to Australian audiences, but for being here for this uh, really wonderful um, interview. Uh, I wish you well with the journey of the film. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's been thank an honour. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs>